Hey YouTube, this is Kathy Stevenson with Living Miracle Homestead. Just wanted to show you, um, I cooked, um, I went home and got some colors off of my plants and I'm cooking them up for my mom and my sister and David tonight. And, uh, didn't have a whole lot, you know, but I'm um, sweating them up really good and then I'm going to put some water in it. In here I've got some, um, drippings off of a ham. Um, and some onions, and I'll take you on to show you the rest of the meal. I'm going to make fried potatoes, cornbread, and uh, pinto beans, and fried green tomatoes. Okay, so over in here we've got the beans and the uh, ham that was left over uh, from Christmas that we packaged up in like four or five bags we have one left after this one and um that's what we're using to season the the, the beans and uh, we are going to put this little dude together and get it get it going okay so this is how i make fried green tomatoes i take um and i pepper the tomato then I put it in a little flour then I put a little egg and uh, get both sides coated with both and then after the egg it gets wet again and you can put it into the flour I mean cornmeal I like mine with cornmeal a lot of people may like theirs with uh, flour or tempura uh, uh, dressing but um, I like them the way my grandma made them, and that's my favorite. I like the crunchiness of the of the um, cornmeal. So when I get those cooking, I'll bring you back. Okay, so I'm breading with one finger, I mean one hand, <laughs> one finger. Oh, what a crazy nut. Anyways. Uh, these tomatoes came off my volunteer plant, and I can't wait to taste them. I haven't made any green tomatoes off of. I kept saying I was going to, but I hadn't gotten to it yet. So, this is how I do it. I just give them a little pepper, and I'll coat them in flour. The flour helps them for some reason. Helps the uh, egg wash stick, and then the egg wash helps the cornmeal stick. That gives them a really delicious. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm trying to do this and watch the camera too. <laughs> Anyways, it gives it a really delicious coating. I got some fried taters cooking. The greens are back there, collard greens and some tea on. It'll be a good old dinner. Okay, so now, okay, so now I'm making uh, some cornbread, and I'm gonna mix it up and put it in that iron skillet. The only thing I have to do yet is to put the milk in. That's eggs, oil. That's one egg and oil, uh, corn, self-rising cornmeal, and uh, all-purpose flour. Okay, so that's the consistency that I like. I don't ever measure anything, so just thought I'd show that to you before I pour it in the pan. Okay, so it's in the pan. I like to put enough uh, uh, oil in there so that it'll float up on top so that it makes the uh, crust really crispy and it helps it keep from not sticking. Now when cooking these, you have to watch them very closely because you can see they kind of try to burn a little bit. So sometimes you might have to take them out um, before they're done. But I like them really golden brown like that. how 
beautiful that is. And I put them on um, paper towels so that uh, they get that nice uh, clean taste instead of a bunch of grease. Kind of absorb some of the grease. I don't like a bunch of grease. And by the way, anytime you ever see me cooking, unless a, a recipe calls for it, I don't salt nothing. Nobody ever knows it. Except for David. And he complains because he knows it. He, he's helped me cook, so he knows that I've always cooked with no salt. Um, when my grandmother was very sick when I was a teenager, um, I cooked for her because she's the one that taught me how to cook. And um, his mom worked all the time and she was providing for us kids. And the neatest part about it was I got to spend quality time with my grandparents because they lived with us. And um, I got to learn how to cook. But her doctors would not allow her to have any salt whatsoever because she had cancer. And um, she also had blood pressure problems. And um, so, let me put this somewhere. Hold on. Okay. I kept that from burning because I don't know if you've ever cooked uh, cornmeal before, but uh, the cornmeal tends to uh, burn very quickly. So anyways, let's get back to the story. My grandma <laughs> was a very funny woman. While she was sick and very, very sick and not knowing what she was doing, my oldest aunt came in and brought her a plate that she had cooked. And I want you to know that she threw that plate across, across the room and she said, I'm not eating that. It don't taste right. Well, little did she know, I had been cooking all that time with no salt. And she wanted her salt. She was fit to be tied. She told my aunt she was not going to eat it. So I went in and doctored it up with some spices and some, some um, pepper. Pepper makes everything taste better, I think. Some people don't like it, but I love it. Anyways. And I took it back in there. Not the same plate, because she had thrown it all over the room. But I took a fresh plate to her, and she ate every drop. So, it was very funny at the time. My aunt said, I don't know how you, get, how you can get her to do what you want her to. I said, well, it's all about flavor, Aunt Dolores. It, 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 doesn't, uh, it doesn't taste good if it doesn't have any spices. You have to complement the food with other things or let the food take over the flavor. So that's uh, a little story from the past. But, um, she was a little pistol. She taught me how to cook and clean and sew and do a lot of things, even garden. I used to garden with her all the time. We'd, we'd have huge gardens in our backyard and uh, one that one that was so big one time that I, I, I asked her one day, we must have had probably 150 um, um, okra plants <laughs> and I asked her I said what are we going to do with all this she said we'll have it year round honey anytime you want it you'll have it I said oh yay <laughs> I was a crazy kid I followed her around like a little puppy dog but uh, yeah we love to garden and mess around together. I was her little sidekick. So, I'll bring you back to show you the ending. 
the cornbread is done. I don't know if you can see that. Isn't it beautiful? I'm going to crack the lid and turn it on and let that uh, cool just a little bit because not everything's done. And I'll bring you back when I plate it up. Okay, one little thing that I forgot to tell you. I like to finish my beans off on the stove. See how thin the water is? That's because I fast cooked in the pressure canner cooker thing. So, before my mom gets in here, I have to tell you a secret. My grandmother said, put baking soda, yes, baking soda, in your beans. Watch it fizzle. It gets the gas out. A teaspoon of baking soda, that's what I do. And it gets the gas out. See it all bubbling? It is so good. But that's the way it looks. <laughs> I've even seen it that the bubbles turn green. But we like it thick. Uh, we like it to thicken up. And uh, that's how we do it. A little baking soda. in a little bit. Okay, so here's the tomatoes that I cut up that were ripe. Yes, uh, they're not ripe enough for me. I like mine as ripe as ripe as ripe could be. But I like to have a little red tomato along with the fried green tomatoes. I know it sounds weird, but they have total different flavors. And I like uh, onions for my topping on my beans makes it really delicious. So there is nothing better than cooking for your family and enjoying their company. I'm so glad you could join us for our meal tonight. Now that is a meal fit for a queen or a king or a grandma or whoever. Amen. See you next time here on Living Miracle Homestead. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share with your friends. And see you next time. Bye. Well, I guess everybody liked the food. <laughs> Empty plates. <laughs>